of little k2 uh, uh, result due to Lullman. Um, so uh, one of the key features which is going to be uh, secretly playing a big role uh, is the fact that Z has a V2 to the one self map. In fact, the idea of Z came about um, uh, trying to find a finite spectrum which has V2 to the one self map uh, at the prime two and previous known examples had V2 to the 32. So this was the first motivation um, um, for finding Z. But anyway, this is going to be important because this means that all the differentials in whatever spectral sequence we look at related to Z are going to be V2 to the one linear. Um, anyway, um, so uh, let's see what today's goal is. Today's goal is not understand Z too much in details or V2 to the one self map, but to compute its K2 local homotopy group. So it's a type two spectrum, very nice, has a V2 to the one self map, hopefully we can compute a K2 local type, a K2 local homotopy groups and K2 local homotopy groups of any finite spectrum of type less than equal to two are basically uh, uh, unknown. Complete answer is unknown. So today, hopefully we are gonna talk about a complete answer. Um, okay, so, um, so there are certain tools that we can use to compute K2 local homotopy groups. One way is take a ring spectrum E and which detects V2 means if you look at its homotopy, you, you, you write down V2, for example, BP or BP2 or little TMF, which has V2 to the 32 in it. Um, and what you can do, you can, um, you can run the V2 inverted E-based adams novikov spectral sequence. So you can start from the E1 page uh, and keep computing if you compute differentials and if this once once you compute all the differentials you end up computing the homotopy groups of k2 local of uh, k2 local homotopy of that spectrum the spectrum we are interested in is z um, there is another tool this is essentially the due to work of a lot of uh, big names in our area um, like jack morava hopkins devinats miller Ravenel, um, probably I'm missing someone. Um, but anyway, the upshot is that the, there, is a, uh, there is a ring spectrum called the Morava E theory. So we are gonna look at height two Morava E theory. So there is one for each height. And then there is a corresponding Morava stabilizer group, uh, sometimes called the big Morava stabilizer group, which is denoted by G2, uh, which acts uh, via ring map and if you take the homotopy fixed points, you get the K2 local sphere. So consequently, we have a homotopy fixed point spectral sequence whose E2 page is cohomology in, uh, uh, of the group G2, the Morava stabilizer group with coefficient in a Morava E theory of Z and computes the uh, homotopy group of K2 local Z. So uh, this is tool number two. So, um, so my goal today is to describe tool number two and hopefully I'll say some words about tool number one using the spectrum TMF, mostly its consequences. Um, uh, but then our renewed goal, even, even, even before we start computing K2 local homotopy groups, the local goal is to understand the action of the Morava stabilizer group, high two Morava stabilizer group G2, on the Morava E theory of Z. Um, so that's our first goal. Um, but before that, you know, anything that we do in height two, first we go, should go back to height one and, uh, and try to see if we can, rep you know, what, what are the things that we can do in height one and then replicate to height two. So for example, Z, it's, it's almost, it's, it's correct to say that Z is the correct height two analog of a spectrum called Y, which is uh, the more spectra, mod two more spectra, smash the cone of eta. Um, and, uh, and we are gonna compute the uh, homotopy groups of its K1 localization because Y is, is a type one spectrum. So before, uh, before I say that Z is the correct height two analog of Y, let me explain why, why, what, are, what, what is its justification. So if you look at Y, uh, and its cohomology, it's A1 mod mod EQ1. 
whereas Z has A2 mod mod EQ2. Uh, y admits a V1 to the one self map. Similarly, Z admits a V2 to the one self map. And then if you consider TMF as the correct height to analog of, uh, of BO, then you see that Y satisfies the, real, uh, the, the equation BO smash Y is the connective Morawa K theory at height one. And Z satisfies the analogous equation for height two. So, uh, so Z is indeed the big brother of Y, or height two brother. So um, what are we gonna do? So as a warm up, let's compute the homotopy group of Y using two tools, uh, both the tools. We are gonna learn about both the tools today. Um, it's a computational homotopy seminar, so we got to compute something. So start with a basic computation of BO resolution, but I'm gonna focus on the second, which is the homotopy fi fixed point spectral sequence, the height one analog of homotopy fixed point spectral sequence uh, using Y. So uh, BO resolution of, of Y, um, oh, I should write down the E1 page, the E1 page, Oh, sorry, no, it's correct. Uh, so E1 page is, uh, looks like as displayed, but the E2 page is hard to compute. Uh, the reason why E2 page is hard to compute is because BO star BO is not a flat ring over BO star. So that means it's not an X computation, it becomes difficult. However, uh, uh, one of the methods that comes up with, with another work with uh, Mark, Anias, uh, Dominic, and Jolie is what we call the Agathokakological method, which computes the V1 periodic part, not V1 inverted, but V1 periodic parts. So it has a little more information than V1 inverted part, um, which can be basically obtained. This is, this is, not, this is a slightly involved computation, uh, but you take the polynomial algebra on the May elements H I1s, starting from H21, and apply the differential d of h i one equal to v one times h i minus one comma one square. Once you do that, you see that all the generators, all the powers of h i ones disappear, except the the iota, which is the generator in degree zero, and h two one, which is a generator in degree five, and um, all rest of them are v one torsion. So you remove once you invert v one, and you end up getting that the home group of K1 local y, y is 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 a Lorentz series on V1 at joint two generators iota and and H21. Okay, so now let's do this, this the same computation, same same thing using the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. The height one Morava E theory is nothing but the complex K theory localized at the prime two uh, or completed. Um, and the height one Morava stabilizer group is nothing but the two adic units, which is isomorphic to the cyclic group of order two, which is which is a finite subgroup, uh, uh, direct product with the p adic, uh, the two adic itself. So, um, so we run the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. But before we can run this, we have to understand the action of the Morava stabilizer group, the height one Morava stabilizer group on E1 star Y. So that's what we are gonna focus on. Um, so Y is M21 smash cone of nu, a cone of eta, which means that Y is basically two copies of M21 attached by eta. And then um, we know that KU smash the more spectra is K1, therefore we get that KU KU uh, star of Y is two copies of K1 um, because Y has two copies of M21. Now C2 acts on KU2 uh, or KU. So therefore it acts on KU star of Y. How does it act? It might either swap the two fact two K1, two direct copies of K1 star or which means that C2 acts regularly or it's going to uh, act trivially. So that we can understand, and, and the, what's gonna change is the, home to, the fixed points under the C2 action. But we know that if I, if I take the homotopy fixed points of, of KU, I'm gonna get 
the KO, the the real K theory, and it's well known that uh, KO smash Y is just one copy of K1, uh, which means that C2 must have acted non-trivially. So C2 has only two sort of uh, representations of degree two over field of order two, which is trivial or or the regular one. So we can conclude that E1 star of Y is actually K1, K1 star tensor with the regular representation of C2. So this is a proof. So this is really useful because now we can apply a Shapiro's lemma, which is basically a change of ring sort of lemma. What it does, it, 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 it cancels out the C2 on the coefficient and C2 uh, in the group, uh, uh, which is a subgroup. And what you get is basically that the E2 page is nothing but the cohomology of the two adic integers with coefficient in uh, K1 star. But this is two adic cohomology of two, two adic integers is basically computing cohomology of S1, which has one generator in degree zero, one generator in degree one, so it's an exterior. Um, so we again get two copies, um, two copies of K1, one by iota, and one by uh, this row. Um, anyway, this is not a, a ring by any mean. Um, but one thing to note is that in the previous computation, the starting point of V2, V1 periodic tower was at degree five given by H21, whereas this row gives a generator in degree minus one. So row is roughly speaking, V1 to the minus two times H21. Um, Anyway, so uh, let's move on to our, our goal. Um, you know, um, like I show it in show it in this picture. Like uh, you know, we have this goalpost, and all we have to do is take k to local z and kick kick the ball in and score the goal and write down a paper. But the problem is uh, there is a there is a very uh, very uh, you know skillful goalkeeper sitting just in front of the goal. So, uh, so what I really want to explain is, is, is how this goalkeeper looks like and what are, what are its uh, um, nature. And once we understand its nature, well, then we can fool and sco score the goal. So that's, that's what I'm gonna explain, the, the nature of this goalkeeper. Um, okay, so First, we need to understand uh, a little bit about the Morawa E theory. Uh, Morawa E theory is related to height to hond uh, deformations of height to formal form uh, Honda formal group law. But um, I'm going to avoid all the uh, theoretical. There is a lot of interesting theories uh, uh, related to Morawa E theory, but I'm going to skip all that. But I'm just going to give you the key information, the key key equations that you need. To, to actually carry out the competition. Rest you can throw away for this talk for now. Um, um, so first thing to note is the homotopy groups of the Morawa E theory. It's, it's, uh, 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 so it's, it's a polynomial, uh, take the polynomial on one generator U1 uh, over the ring, the width rings of uh, field of order four and adjoint uh, u plus or minus one, where u one has degree zero and u has degree minus um, minus two. So this is an even periodic uh, uh, ring spectrum. Um, and if you're a little confused about the wittering, um, uh, wittering is nothing but um, the uh, uh, an extension of the two adic integers. Uh, um, where the Galois group is C2, just like C2 is the Galois group of um, uh, the extension F4 over F2. Um, anyway, um, the other key thing to note is that it admits uh, a map from BP star. BP star maps to E2 and V1 maps to U1 times U inverse. See that the degree match of V1 is in degree one and uh, sorry, degree two and V2 is in degree six. So, and V2 maps to U to the negative three and all the higher VIs in BP star maps to zero for, uh, for basically I greater than two. So which means this is also a ring map 
So, uh, which means that we can, comp and, and basically the definition of uh, the Morava E theory of Z, E homology of Z is basically you take the uh, um, E2 star and tensor over BP star with the BP star of Z. So to do this, we have to compute BP star of Z. So let's compute BP star of Z. So BP star, this is not hard from just the A module structure or A2 module structure. You can see that BP star of Z looks like BP star mod two comma V1. So two and V1 disappears. Um, and, and what you're left with is eight generators and generators are X0, X2 up to X6, Y6 up to Y12. And, and I named the generator in such a way that the degree of Xi is actually I and Yi is I. So you can see that there are two generators in degree six and one in every even degree all the way up to degree 12. So, yeah. The, the notation also suggests that there's some like, there's like two families, like there's, are, the, are the X's a family and the Y's a family or we are- Yeah, so like, you can uh, think of X, X, X's are family um, uh, of related to one. So Z consists of two copies of A1 smash cone of new. So X consists of one family of A1 and then you uh, attach by a self map on A1 smash cone of new. So the other copy, the top copy, it denotes y. So this this is how it's arranged. And it will be pretty clear from this the following map. In fact, you can locate these generators. So these generators um, you can you can choose such that from the map from BP star Z to H star of Z, which is this uh, quotient of this polynomial ring, maps the generator to the generator in degree zero, C2 to C1 square G, C4 to C1 to the 4G. So X X's are like C1 to the 2i multiples of G and Y's are like um, uh, C2 squared, C1 to the 2i multiples of C2 squared G. So that's how it has been arranged. Um, anyway, so from here we get easily that E2 star of Z is E2 star mod out by 2 comma U1, U1 goes away because V1 goes away in BP star, uh, homology of Z uh, with with these generators that I just described. Uh, but the important thing to note is that two comma U1, which is the maximal prime ideal in E1 star, just goes away in the E1 star of Z, which is gonna play a very crucial role later on. Um, one, of, one of the benefits of, of Z. Um, anyway, because E2 is even periodic, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna multiply these generators by appropriate powers of U so that it all lives in degree zero. Why am I doing this? You'll see in a bit, um, but I rename these generators and um, these are merely some appropriate powers of U's of Xi's and Yi's and this generates E0 Z. And so I can write down E2 star of Z as F4 adjoint U plus or minus one with this Xi uh, bars and Yi bars. So, um, you know, we saw that one of the key key thing that helped us computing E0 uh, in, in K2 local homotopy of Y was the fact that C2 act regularly on E0Y. So in fact, E0Y is F2 adjoint, uh, uh, it's the group ring F2 C2. So uh, we can actually at this point, you know, we were thinking, okay, hope or expect or plead, you know, I'm just putting my sentiments in there as we were going through this uh, research with Philip, um, that something, um, uh, some there is some finite subgroup um, that, um, uh, you know, like E20 of Z is F4 adjoint, uh, regular, uh, is, is a regular representation of some finite subgroup of G2 of order eight. And G2 is well studied and hey, ta-da, we have a finite subgroup, quaternion inside the Morava, big Morava stabilizer group. So a reasonable guess would be that E20 of Z is F4 adjoint Q8, or in other words, Q8 acts regularly on E20 of Z. Uh, it has eight generators, so that's, that's what we wanna prove. Or uh, that's, that's, that's a good guess. So, but how do we prove it? So we, we saw that in the height one computation, the, the 
the good thing about C2 was that there are only two different isomorphic classes of representation of C2 um, uh, of, of dimension two. But the same is not true for Q8 over A4, which makes, the, makes life a very, very, very difficult. Um, so in fact, uh, if you look at, so Q8 mod the plus or minus one is the Klein four group or C2 cross C2. And you can see that the regular representation of V8 uh, sits inside, it sits in an exact sequence with regular representation induced from C2 cross C2, as I described in that exact sequence. But does that uniquely define, if I say that, oh, if, if, if this extension is non-trivial, does that mean that it is, it is, um, it is the regular one? Uh, you would think so, but it's, 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 not, it's not true. Oh my God, why is Philip uh, texting me now? Oh, okay, anyway. Um, 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 uh, so, um, uh, so what happens is, um, so in fact, this is not true because, you know, this is one of those cases where the characteristic of the field divides the order of the group. And there are like some bizarre, uh, bizarre representations that can come up. In fact, we came up with quite a few representations of degree eight, which sits in this exact sequence, non-trivially yet not regular. Um, so proving regularity is, is requires explicit computation. In other words, Philip and I had to dig a little deeper. So there is, there is Philip in the hole, you know, solving his PhD problem and I'm, I'm being the supporting hand. Okay. So, um, um, anyway, so first we have to learn about uh, G2. What exactly is G2? So G2 is S2, which is, which is the Morava stabilizer. I don't know, sometimes small Morava stabilizer group, something. But what it is, it is, it is the automorphism group of the height to form, Honda formal group law over F4. F4. So uh, G2 has this description as semi-direct product. Uh, and then there is there is a norm map from this S2 to the P, two adic integers, uh, and the kernel is called the norm one subgroup and is denoted by S21. Uh, S21 can be uh, written as a semi-direct product with a profinite group and a finite subgroup, K and um, G24, where inside G24 we see this Q8 sitting as a uh, uh, as a normal subgroup in, uh, with, with, with C3, Q8 semi-direct product with C3 is G24. So that, that's where the Q8 lives. Um, it's a lot of problem. This, these are not easy. Some place to read, read will be Anias's work on algebraic duality and, and a lot of, lot of her work. I think that's where I learned all these things, uh, you know, uh, good written accounts. Um, um, anyway, Another uh, another way of describing S two this is this goes back this is what I learned from the Green Book uh, of Doug um, where you take this this uh, algebra O two which is with ring over F four at joint T modulo this relation T squared plus two comma T omega minus omega sigma T equal to zero um, so uh, you quotient out by this ideal and you take the units of that and that's precisely the Morava stabilizer group S2 uh, where omega is basically elements of F4 um, and sigma is the Frobenius map. Um, so one thing you can do inside V ring, you see that, you know, this, this, this thing have coefficients in V ring. Um, inside V ring, there is like powers of two. So what you can do is, is is that using t squared plus two equal to zero, you can trade off uh, the powers of two with t and you can get a power series out of it. And, and what you get in return is that any, any element in gamma can be written as a power series where the coefficients are basically F4, take Muller lifts of F4. So, th so coefficients in F4. So this is, this is like a nice representation. Uh, and I will denote this coefficients by A and gamma. Um, so, um, 
So now I'm going to give you the key diagram which allows you to go from BP star BP co-module structure to understanding the action of G2 on E2 star. The, the key information is as follows. So you take BP star BP, which is BP star at joint TIs, um, and it maps to the continuous uh, maps from G2 to E2 star. And it goes via this, this complex BP star adjoint TI tilde, where T0 is also inverted, and then there is U plus or minus one. Remember that TI has some, some internal degree, which is two to the I plus one minus two. Uh, but TI tildes all live in degree zero. And you multiply, uh, so this is where TI maps to. TI maps to U to the one Proceed. minus, yeah. This is Dan again. You just mean you multiply by the appropriate power of U in order to put it. Yeah, and, and also put it back into the tilde inverse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and then um, then that's the first map, and the second map is that Ti tilde gives you a map from G two to E two star. Where does it map to? We don't have a whole lot of information, but all we know as that is that Ti tilde of gamma maps to this coefficient a i gamma which we saw in the previous page, mod 2u1. So there could be additional terms. But remember when we are doing this with z, 2 and u1 is, is killed, which means this congruence actually becomes equality for z, which is, which is also very nice. Um, anyway, so all we need to do is to understand BP star BP co-module structure on BP star z. All right, so we begin. So, um, so what you do, all you know about Z is it's A2 star co-module structure. And there are various A module structure, A star co-module structure, but it's, it's hard to describe all of them. It's, there is a lot of them probably, but nevertheless, we can do the A2 star co-module structure. And these are the images of the generators of BP star to H star. So I'm, I'm just describing the co-module, the co-action, A2 star co-action on H star of Z. This will allow us to understand the BP star BP co-action, but modulo some ideal. So first of all, this, this TI maps to the anti-automorphic image of CI square. Um, uh, and, um, and from there, you know that um, you get some relation, but modulo, uh, but some of the relations are congruences, not equalities, because of this uh, quotienting out. Because when we, um, uh, because A2 star only sees V1, V2, T1, T1 square, and T2, that's it. Um, and the rest are unknown. So you put all the indeterminacies in because of the degree reason. But notice that some of the congruences are equalities. That's because, you know, there are for, for just dimensional reasons. Um, but ne nevertheless, you put all the indeterminacies and you work out uh, maybe, maybe some change of basis tricks and you see that there are, um, there are some unknown coefficients which are dependent on each other. And you can basically say that as a BP star BP co-module uh, BP star of any Z will be one of these eight possibilities. See, there are three unknowns uh, with, which can be zero or one, so giving us eight possibilities. Um, anyway, um, from this data, uh, we can get the action of S2 on the generators Xi and Yi's of E2, E2, 0Z up to some indeterminacy. Uh, given by this coefficient a, b, and c. Uh, as a sample, uh, let me show you how it, this can be done. Uh, like for example, the co-module uh, co map uh, of, on x2 is one tensor x2, t1 tensor x0. Um, so, um, so you replace t1 by u inverse t0 tilde inverse t1 tilde inverse. And so now you want to understand gamma on uh, x2 bar, which is basically gamma on u times x2, and you run this formula uh, on the product, gamma x on u by t0 tilde of gamma. And so you run, you see that 
uh, finally, uh, finally you get uh, gamma of x2 bar is t0 tilde gamma x2 bar plus t1 tilde gamma of x0 bar. Uh, which means if you put an appropriate Morava stabilizer group and if you know it's T0 and T1, which we know modulo 2 and U1, but 2 and U1 are already taken out, we know how each Morava stabilizer element is gonna give, uh, gonna act on this generator X2. So you can do this for all possible, um, all possible X, Xi bar and Yi bar and what you need to know is the description of Ti tilde for all elements in Q8. And this has been done in the work of Hans Werner Henn and Anias. Uh, it's written down in uh, the paper on algebraic duality. Um, so you can basically read off the coefficient Ti tilde of gamma uh, for i less than or equal to two. And i less than or equal to two because uh, see T3, T4, all of them are in degree 12. Uh, T3 is in degree 14. T4 is in degree uh, 28, uh, not 28, uh, whatever, any, you know, greater than 12. So they don't play any role. So we are lucky. And so we, we are able to compute the action of Q8 on all these generators. And even with the indeterminacy, uh, uh, doesn't play a role in our conclusion, uh, which is that any, any Z in Z tilde is isomorphic as an Q8 module to E two zero Z, um, um, sorry, E two zero Z is isomorphic to the F four adjoint Q eight. So that's that's the key result. That's how you get it. But then the next part is to compute the E two page of the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence, which which is my next goal. Because now we got this analogous result for height two. Now we are ready. We are we are ready as ever. So um, so so what do we need? Do we need we need to understand, uh, oops, hold on. Is everything okay? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, okay, fine. Um, um, okay, so, um, so we can compute, we can compute the cohomology of G2 with a coefficient in more of a E theory of Z and the, uh, the difference between G2 and S2 is this Galva group, but the Galva group doesn't play much role except to bring down the coefficient from F4 to F2. So what you do is you just take the fixed point with respect to the Galva group. So that's easy. But then we have this exact sequence using the norm one subgroup. Uh, consequently, we have this lindell hochschild stair spectral sequence, um, which computes the cohomology of S2 from the knowledge of cohomology of S21 with coefficient in uh, uh, Morawa E theory of Z. So, um, so we need to compute um, we need to compute the cohomology of S21 with coefficient uh, 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 coefficient in E star Z first. So that's our first uh, again a mini goal inside our big goal. So this can be done using uh, algebraic duality resolution. It's a theorem due to Gors, Hen, Mahawal, Resk, Baudry. It basically resolves the two adic integers um, as a as a Z two adjoint um, S, as an S two one module um, in in terms of its finite subgroups. So um, and it's a finite length. So we can just do a, it's a finite process to compute. Uh, the uh, the the e two page so um, and the formulas are nice and it's all given um, so what it boils down to by basically a change of ring you see that all this g twenty four g twenty four and c six g twenty four prime is some conjugation of g twenty four probably uh, but anyway um, it boils down to computing uh, 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 the group cohomology with um, uh, of G24 with coefficient in E star Z. Oh, sh shoot, I forgot to change the notation. But anyway, it, it has to be E2 star of Z. Um, but anyway, E2 star Z has a very nice description, which is it's, 
F4 adjoint U plus or minus one um, adjoint, uh, adjoint Q8. So we can apply Shapiro's lemma bunch of times. In fact, let me tell you a story about this. Um, uh, so I was, I was going through Philip's thesis and whenever I asked like some questions about him, he was like, it follows from Shapiro's lemma. It's just a change of ring lemma. It's just that I didn't know it very well, how to apply it cleverly. And, uh, and so one night I was like, okay, I have to get this. And I really understood like the, like the little tricks involving Shapiro's lemma. And while I was learning about this trick, my, my, my headphone was playing this song uh, uh, Shakira Shakira. So, um, so I thought, why not write a song where I replace Shakira Shakira by Shapiro Shapiro. So I, I, I wrote down a little limericks, which I'll put on my web page later on. But anyway, that's a separate story. You guys can sing along this later on. Um, um, but anyway, let's come back uh, jokes apart. Let's come back to the main theorem. Uh, what happens is that when you compute the duality, algebraic duality resolution, um, you, there is one non-trivial differential, which you can, which you can also compute, but it's, it's non-trivial. I'm dodging that issue here. Uh, but once you compute that, you get a complete description of the E2 page of the uh, home topic fixed point spectral sequence, which computes what is called the um, half of K2 local sphere tensor with Z, which is, um, uh, which is like E2, which is like the homotopy fixed point of E2 with respect to S21. And what happens is just for dimensional reasons, this spectral sequence just collapses. So this is nice. So things collapse at E2 page. And so all we have to do now is run the, um, uh, uh, run the lindell hochschild slate spectral sequence which we uh, described earlier here, um, which is like uh, adding one more generator because it's computing cohomology of Z2. Um, okay, so we are gonna do that. And, and we see uh, the final chart is, uh, has some issues. Um, final chart has some, um, issues because they, there are possible D3 dif differentials. So let me just explain this a little more. Um, so uh, all the black dots are the ones that are coming from, uh, coming from uh, this, this computation, the computation of cohomology of S21 with coefficient in E star Z. And then you have an additional generator, exterior generator, because of this lindell hochschild Sayer spectral sequence, causing a generator in degree minus one, and it's the black multiple of, of, of this, uh, this white circle or hollow circle becomes, gives you a bunch of this hollow circle. But let me tell you implicitly in this, we know that all the differentials are V2 to the one periodic. Um, so there are some possible differentials. You can eliminate some of those. For example, you can eliminate the one on X00 because it's just the you know, inclusion of the bottom cell, but there are some other ones which you just can't. So it's, it's a problem. So this is where the work with Philip ends. So now the point is we got to uh, resolve these differentials. So how can we do it? So I only described one of the two methods of computing K2 local homotopy groups. Maybe I should say something about the other method. So, so which is which I which uh, uh, we came up with the name of Agathocalological method for uh, um, for TMF resolution of Z. So, so what we do is we study the V2 periodic part of the TMF resolution of Z. So, just the periodic. We throw away the um, torsion part. And in this method, we can, we can do that and compute the E2 page. Um, the other thing I'm just going to mention is that not only since we are computing V2 periodic part and not V2, we are not inverting V2, we can locate the starting point of each V2 periodic family uh, in the Adam spectral sequence for Z. 
And Adam Spector sequence can be computed uh, using computer. Um, and just by the sheer location of this, uh, of this, some of these elements that we see in Adam Spector sequence, um, 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 we can eliminate this differential for a particular model of Z. That's why the uh, is named for one particular, you know, a type two spectra in Z tilde. So for one, probably it is true for other Z, but we don't know. So all these differentials are actually non-existent. So, so we do this analysis and um, um, if we do this analysis um, for one particular Z and we can eliminate this D3 differentials, but, um, but maybe we can conjecture it's true for all of them, but it requires some explicit computation. Um, however, um, I must say that this uh, agatococcological method is pretty much work in progress uh, joined with Mark, Anius, uh, Dominic, and Jolie, and uh, and currently, you know, it's 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 a long story, and maybe we should save it for another day. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my talk early here. Uh, thank you, uh, and so that's it. And oh yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so here is uh, Tricks Don't Lie. So that's the name of my song. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, my hand muted, everyone. Okay. So I should stop sharing, right? Or maybe not. So this picture is kind of... I would leave the... I would leave it. Someone might... Well, let's just see. Um, leave it up for a second here. I'm going to mute everyone just so, to get down on the background noise. And then I will unmute... Sorry, where do you go? Where's Prothereus? Okay, unmuted Proceed. Okay, so um, further questions for Proceed? I have a question. Yeah, Anis? Yeah, so my question is, can you get away with, I love the algebraic duality resolution spectral sequence, but I thought you guys could do it without that. Yes, yes, it can be done. Actually, uh, it can be again done, you know, the, 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 some of the ingredient that goes into the algebraic duality resolution uh, can be actually used to get a direct computation because the cohomology of this uh, profinite subgroup K is known. And I think we had this discussion and it's correct that it can be done. Uh, but I just did it with the algebraic duality or we just did it with the algebraic duality because, you know, it can be compared with so many other things like K2 local sphere computation and could be handy. So, and also it's easier to explain. People love machines. Okay, cool, thank you. Other questions? Actually to uh, piggyback off on this question, so like if you're gonna try and do it using a straight up uh, K2 local Adams Novikov spectral sequence, like Moravici based Adam Novikov spectral sequence, homotopy fixed point spectral sequence for the Morava stabilizer group, then you have to know that the uh, Morava, you, you don't just have, I mean, the, I mean, it seems like the it seems like the kind of thing you want to do is to not just know that the Morava module is trivial as a you know, you know is 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 induced up from a trivial Q8 module, but more specifically, it seems like you'd want to know uh, you would you would want to know that it's you know that that it looks like maps, you know you know it that that it you know you need to know the full Morava stabilizer group action and not just the Q8 action. Does that complicate things? No, uh, I mean, what happens is that um, uh, Morava stabilizer group has this filtration by, you know, Fi over two or something. So, right. so basically F three over two above acts trivially. So apart from this, apart from this Q8, there, there is, uh, I'm talking about S21 probably, but yeah. apart, Apart from this Q8, there is there is another element which acts non-trivially and rest acts trivially. So got it. So so basically, uh, the action on E2 star of Z is induced up from a quotient of the Morava stabilizer 
group, not a subgroup in, so quotient by um, F3, two of S21. Mm -hmm. So that's- Got it. Okay, great. Other questions? Uh, I have a naive question. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. hi. Um, yeah. Is there a geometric description of the map from BP star adjoined T1, T2, et cetera, to continuous maps from the Morava stabilizer group to E2 star, something like there's a Galois extension? Um, is there a geometric description? I don't know. Like, it seems like one has to dig into the paper of Hopkins and, and Devinads to, to understand that. Um, there might be other experts in this, in this chat room who can say more about it. I just uh, use the tools that were enough for me. Um, so, yeah, this anyone else? Kind of geometric. Yeah. It, it could be, I mean, it probably there is, I mean, um, but I don't, I don't know. I have a comment or question on the, on the uh, structure as a Morava model. It, I mean, it almost behaves, well, I think it, it behaves, but also it, it doesn't seem to be, but it behaves like it's sort of induced up from the trivial module from the subgroup, which you call K. It's not quite yeah. true because, because the K in, contains an index two subgroup which actually does act trivially, the F3 half. Yeah. Uh, but the K itself has still this one other element, alpha, which doesn't act trivially. But sort of for the calculation, it sort of behaves as if all of the K acts trivially. I mean, your, your, your E2 term looks like, just like if you calculate the commod stabilizer group from the, on the module, which is uh, up in K. Yeah, it does look like that. Um, if you look at if you look, if you look at the zero subgroup, I think I have to, and if you look at degree zero. Huh? Yes. So you're saying that it. Sorry, can you can you repeat uh, the key point of your question? So it seems to me that the Morava module of Z, you know, Yeah. Um, for the calculation, at least, no. If you calculate the commodity of the zero subgroup of the stabilized group, so uh -huh. you, don't, you don't look at the element of order three, then everything is, period, is periodic with period two. Huh? Uh, and then it looks to me that E2 zero behaves for the calculation as if it was induced from K to the zero subgroup. Yeah, K, yeah, that, that is that is correct. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of funny because. It, 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 it doesn't act trivially, but for the calculation, it behaves like. Yeah. It's, it's something weird. Yeah. Okay, I have to. Yeah, it's like computing the cohomology of K with coefficients in. Yeah, F2 adjoint, F4 adjoint U plus or minus one. So, yeah, it is, it is. Um, Can I say something? I'm a little yeah, confused yeah, yeah, by yeah. your question. I'm guessing that's Hans Werner, more reporter. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think K acts trivially on the Morava module of Z. That's what I've understood from reading Preset and Phil. Uh, no, except one element alpha. It does, acts, alpha does not act trivially. That's what you're saying. No, yeah, I mean, that's where that's where you get get one differential in the duality resolution. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that if you if you throw away alpha from K, then what you get is 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 the the filtration F three what is written as F three two in the literature that I that I have read. Um, FT, F32 of S1, and that, that thing acts trivially on uh, Morawa E theory of Z. Um, can I ask a question? This is Doug Ravenel. 
Hi. Some of your formulas, you had a factor of T0 or T0 inverse, something like that. Where did, I ne didn't understand where that came from. Oh, let me share my screen again then. Um, um, yeah, so. Come on, uh, share. Okay, yeah, so. Uh, so. So here, here you go. So one source of, so here is a sample example. Uh, for example, we have computed the uh, co-module st structure um, on this generator X2, which is T1 X0 plus one X2. Um, then I, then what you do is, is you know that uh, X2, um, X2 bar, so you want to understand the action on X, X2 bar. So you apply gamma on X2 bar, and gamma acts on U X2 by a ring map, so uh, way it acts on U is by multiplying by T0 tilde of gamma, uh -huh. and and then you also replace this T1 by, by the image that I previously described, like T1 is gonna go to U to the uh, u to the minus one times t zero tilde inverse t one tilde. So you you bring the t zeros. Well, wait a minute. Where did that t zero inverse come from in the previous formula? Then. Uh huh. This yeah. t zero tilde uh, inverse comes from, to my knowledge, is is from understanding. Uh, so this. Uh, the the guy in the middle on the left hand middle is is classifying the um, uh, is, is 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 the um, ungraded uh, non strict uh, f formal group. It's it's like the um, it's parameterizing the ungraded non strict p typical formal group laws. Whereas the upper one is the strict one. So when you have an ungraded uh, uh, non non-strict isomorphism of a formal group law, of the Honda formal group law, or, or, any, or any formal group law. Um, hold on, I'm kind of saying something. Then you can create a strict one by adjoining a, a periodic generator. And basically that map, it comes from analysis of that map. So this is, this is part of, um, I don't know, I learned it from Devinets Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And probably your book. I don't know. Probably. Uh, Prasit, uh, Haynes Miller has a question uh, through chat. Um, yeah. Could it be that LK2 of Z is unique? Uh, certainly it is very much, uh, very much possible that LK2 of, of Z, is, uh, Z is unique irrespective of various different mo models of Z. So um, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a question to be answered. Um, I don't know, probably it is. Okay, so I have a question. Oh. I have feedback. Yeah, sorry, uh, there was a feedback loop. I have a question which is possibly related to Hans Werner's question also. So you, you tried only one Z and you try only for one specific A module structure on it. Is it possible that being smart with the A module structure you choose on Z, then you have a trivial action of this alpha and then you can see that. No, actually. alpha always acts non-trivially ir irrespective of uh, of of the model of Z you choose. So how come? Because, because there are so let me let me just again share screen and show you where uh, it happens. Um, um, share screen. So so if you think about alpha, alpha is if it lives in the filtration, the second filtration, it's, it's it lives in the quotient of the second filtration and the third filtration. In particular, T two of that is non-zero. Uh, so if you look at uh, this formula, so you see that regardless of, uh, let, let's look at the indeterminacy, the one with the indeterminacy. Regardless, there are a lot of places where you see non-trivial T2. 
So as soon as you have non-trivial T2, uh, alpha is going to start acting non-trivially on those generators where, you, where there is involvement of T2. So for filtration three and above, there, there, there is involvement of T3, uh, but none of this T3 takes part in this co-module structure just for dimensional reason. And hence, F32 of S21, you know, uh, F3 over two of S21 starts acting trivially on this. Okay. So, okay. so alpha has non-trivial T2 tilde uh, of alpha is, is omega, I don't know, probably omega or something. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we'll wrap up the formal questions uh, here. Um, and I'm going to unmute everyone so we can thank Parseet one more time. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll stick around for a while here. People want to chat more informally. And thanks again. We'll meet again in two weeks. Glenn Wilson from the University of Oslo will speak. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>